Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. So it's cold and icy roads out right now, so I'm not going to be doing any riding, but I thought it might be fun to have a little experiment today about tire pressure. One of the things you see in the forums a lot is not just which tire pressure to run, but which tire pressure gauges are the most accurate. And of course, this BMW RT that I own has a tire pressure monitor in it. So a lot of times you'll see discussions about how accurate those can be. So I thought it might be fun to just do a little experiment here. I pulled out a whole bunch of tire pressure gauges that I can find. I probably have more somewhere, but this is a, this will get us started. And I'm wondering, you know, is one type better than another? You know, there's different brands here. I'm not really too concerned about the brand. I'm just curious about, you know, the different styles that we have. So we have some gauges that are installed on pumps, for example. You have the old-fashioned stick gauges, which are, you know, mechanically uh, activated. Um, you have, you know, dial gauges like this. You have digital gauges. So I'm just wondering if there's some pattern we can discern here about which is better than another. So to do this little experiment here, uh, I got my RT. I'm going to be working on the front wheel because that's easier to get to. And I did just run this to the top of the driveway and back, which is just enough to activate the tire pressure sensor. Uh, according to the tire pressure sensor, I have 37 PSI in the front tire. And I didn't run it long enough to warm up the tire, so temperature is really not going to be an issue. We're going to take uh, the readings with all these gauges at the same temperature, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. All right, first up we have the stick gauges. Uh, and I have three of them here. These are cheap as hell. I mean, you can, they almost give these things away. I have this little tiny one, which is meant for bicycles. Uh, when you're, you know, traveling, you just want a little short one. So we'll see what happens here. Let's just start with this one for no particular reason. Now to use these, you have firm pressure, just push it on there. You want to have it oriented like this and the stick should come up to give us a reading. 30, 38 PSI. So stick one. Here's our next one. And we get, I'll call it 35.5. Here's this little goofy one. This one's made by Slime. And we get 35. Okay, I have three digital gauges here, and as it turns out, <laughs> the first one doesn't work. The battery's dead, and that is a problem with digital gauges, uh, that you do reply, rely on battery power, so that one's not going to help us. Let's see about this one. This one's made by Husky. All right, this one, we've got plenty of power. This has a nice light on it, which is actually kind of nice uh, in some circumstances, so let's see what we get with this. 35. Now this digital gauge is made by Motion Pro. I know it has a fairly new battery in it. We'll let that, and this is, I mean, it's really well made. It's got aluminum here and, uh, you know, this is, this is significant. Let's just see what this comes up with. 36.6. All right, next up we have these dial gauges, um, which, you know, I normally like. Let's see how they perform. I'll start with this one. This is Accu gauge. It's is the brand. Let's just see what this comes up with. 35 dead on. This one is made by Slime. And this one is definitely an outlier. This says 30. Now this gauge is mounted on an inflator, so normally you'd have your uh, hose connected here, but you can use the um, dial here without having the hose attached. So let's just see what this comes up with. This one says 30 and a half. Now this one, same idea. We can use this gauge on this inflator. This is a cheap inflator that you might carry in your car or something. Let's just see um, what this does. This one's tough to read because the gauge is not, you know, the dial doesn't give a lot of numbers here, but it looks like about 35 actually. So this is actually pretty good. Now this one's a bicycle pump and you know, I own five uh, compressors, so which should be enough, but sometimes I do grab a bicycle pump for my motorcycle tiles just because it's easier, it's quick, it's right here. So, out of curiosity, this has a big gauge on it. Let's just see what this one reads. This one is coming up at 26. 
All right, here are my results. Now, I did a whole second round of testing because as I'm testing, I'm probably letting a little bit of air out of the valve. So I thought it was only fair to go over the whole round again, and that's on this uh, right-hand side here. But here on the left, let's just talk about our initial results. So what I'm looking for are outliers and um, just to see if, if we're in general agreement on a lot of these gauges. So the BMW TPMS thought we had 37 PSI and that was our starting point. The stick gauges, um, you know, one was a little higher than the other two. Two of them agree, you know, 35 and 35 and a half. I mean, that's almost the same. The one was a little bit higher, but you know, they're in the same general ballpark here. That Husky Digital 35, the Motion Pro Digital 36.6. So again, we're in the same ballpark. Um, this dial gauge, the Accu gauge dial, also 35 in the same ballpark. Now this one is definitely an outlier. That slime dial gauge, I think that's done. That's five PSI different than all the others. So I think <laughs> that might be one it, it, it's time to throw out. Um, that inflator, uh, which is used at the end of a hose normally, again, that was definitely an outlier. That was quite low. Um, the battery inflator, um, you know, which would normally be kept in a car or something like that, 35, and the bicycle pump way off, 26, definitely an outlier. So I have three major outliers here. The rest are in general agreement. This one stick is a little bit higher than the others, um, but a lot of them were really right in the same range here, 35, 36. So that, you know, is heartening, I guess. Now, the second round, keep in mind I did this in this order, so by the time I got to the bicycle pump, you know, I might have let some air out. So the second round when I did that, um, we went from 38 down to 35, from 35 and a half down to 34. So they all dropped a pound or two. Um, so, you know, if you want to look at that as these bottom ones here may have been, you know, less accurate than the top ones here only because I've let some air out, you know, that's fair. But generally speaking, um, I think we have learned something here. One is, it's important to pull all your gauges out and just test them against each other once in a while just to see if they match. So I have one here for sure. I'm just going to throw this out. There's no reason to keep this one anymore. And I would never use a bicycle pump uh, as a gauge anyway, but clearly this shows it's not a good idea. However, the other thing I think we've learned here, you don't need to spend a lot of money to get an accurate gauge. So the Motion Pro Digital indicated 36.6. Uh, which is not far off from the 37 that the TPMS sensor uh, indicated. But these other ones here at 35, 35 and a half, these are really cheap stick gauges. I mean, you cannot get any less expensive than this. Uh, but you know what? They're pretty accurate. Uh, so, you know, I think it's an interesting experiment. So what I would suggest is for yourself, if you have, you know, three or four gauges or as many as I do, test them against each other, find the outliers and throw them out. And as far as the TPMS accuracy, I'd say it's fairly good, um, you know, based on this. This one may be reading a little bit high compared to all these other gauges. So, you know, just take that into account when you're filling your tires. Um, as long as you're consistent, um, I think you'll be okay.